Well, to discuss the political life and times of former head of the interim government, we're joined from Lagos uh, by Ogun, former Ogun State Governor uh, Benga Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight uh, tonight. Uh, well, let me just ask you straight away, what's your assessment of uh, Shunekon's role in the history of Nigeria is? Well, first thing first, we both thank God for his uh, life. Um, <coughs> he got into the process at a time when Nigeria was more or less at a crossroad when he came in as the head of the interim national government. Um, before then, he had caught his state in the corporate world. Um, as a young man, I had opportunity of meeting him when he was chairman of UAC. I was a UAC scholar myself. And since then, I have worked very closely with him. And I'm particularly, you know, happy when he took over the reign of government at such a critical time. And without any doubt, he was clearly a perfect gentleman, um, cool and collected, suave, um, the correct kind of intellect. And I think by and large, uh, he gave a good account of himself within that short period of time where he was the head, head of government. I think our country will miss him dearly and we can only pray that God will uh, you know, bless his soul and keep the family that he left behind. We we'll say a big amen to your prayers tonight. But you know what? Uh, while we're talking about his role as a head of the interim national government, well, some see him as a, peace, a peacemaker who really saved Nigeria at a time of crisis, whereas some others actually see him as a betrayal, you know, for Nigeria's quest for genuine democracy. Let's, you know, have you recollect, really, the life of this man in this context. Well, of course, you know, whatever you do in our country politically, it's a country of uh, 200 million people. There will be a divergence of opinion. Uh, but I think that it's, it's quite settled in history uh, that in any case, he had no option. If he didn't accept that um, uh, role at that time, somebody else would have accepted it. And I think to his credit, um, he, he wasn't a, a, a somebody who was a power monger. Um, he had a job to do. Uh, it was very important that we, somebody, especially from where he comes from, um, so that the idea is not looked as if there is something against his people. And that is the context in which we need to look at it. I don't accept that uh, what happened was a betrayal, no. Uh, quite to the contrary. Uh, from where he's coming from, I think it was human service. And um, he did it creditably well. Yes, and uh, I'd like you to assess uh, his performance uh, in the three months that he had to be at the helm of affairs. Uh, do you think Nigeria would have fared better if that, uh, you know, takeover uh, from late Sonny Abacha had not happened? Uh, it is preposterous to begin to uh, imagine what happened or what could have happened. What has happened has happened. We are not God. Nobody will be in a position to guesstimate how things will have gone if it went the other way. I think what is very, very important is that we all must agree and accept that he came at a critical time in our country's history. Um, other people will have used that opportunity of those three months to consolidate power and to ensure that uh, uh, he remains there uh, but because of his, his, his being, his, uh, where he's coming from, his pedigree, um, I still insist that uh, he did what he had to do. And when it was time to, to, to give it up, without creating any sin, he, he voluntarily you know, let go. Uh, I think going forward, that is the kind of character we require in, in governance. And if uh, people who get into uh, this position have this kind of disposition, our country will probably be a much better place. Yes, indeed. And he's been described as the first Nigerian uh, leader to actually resign from office. Let's talk about his role in the Nigerian economy. The, the former head of state 
under whom he served, uh, Ibrahim Babangida, has praised him so much, saying he was the architect of a principle of free market economy, which helped open up the Nigerian, uh, you know, the system for robust participation of the private sector. Uh, I wonder what you'd have to say about that. Has he been recognized uh, enough for his role economy-wise? Uh, without doubt, at the point when he was coming in, uh, the whole world view of economy have started to change. If you remember, the, the Iron Cote had fallen. Um, the, the Russian Federation was not particularly doing well. And even the Communist China have started the process of liberalization. So it was clear. Uh, in fact, that was why the, the, the former uh, President Babangida uh, talked about a little bit to the right and a little bit to the right in terms of ideology. Um, so clearly that convergence means that the way to go is a free market economy. And I didn't think of a better person than uh, somebody who was the chairman of UAC. Uh, don't forget at that time, the, the UAC was probably the biggest Nigerian conglomerate. Um, so he knew what to do. Uh, he knew what exactly had to be done in order to be in good stead with what you can call the, uh, the, the, the economic blocks of the world, uh, I think he and the former president, Babangida, were quite in sync. Um, with the benefit of that, one can begin to argue or to debate whether, you know, that is the way to go. But at that time, that is the way the whole world was heading. There was no other way. Uh, so to that extent, I believe that... Uh, uh, the economic summit which he midwived, which is still subsistent till today, and some of the policies that they put in place were correct. And there wasn't probably any other uh, option at that time. Right. Uh, and of course, the fact that he has been described as a boardroom guru. And even today, President Buhari did, you know, raise some glowing uh, comments, you know, just painting a picture of the man that was Ernest yeah. Ashoniko, really. But you know what? After, before, even before he became Nigeria's interim president, he was, you know, in the boardroom and went back to the boardroom after he left office. But let's, you know, as well, remembering this man that was. Um, what role really would you say he played in actually, you know, deepening Nigeria's democracy after he left office in 1993? Well, um, don't forget that as a former president, he got admitted into the, um, the Council of State and he was uh, um, attending those meetings. And of course, uh, I had opportunities to be in some of those meetings as a sitting governor at that time. And of course, um, his words was very clear, cool, calm, and collected. It was, he, he, what he was talking about is clear. And to a few of us who are also coming from the private sector, we could read, um, we could understand, and we could appreciate what uh, he was trying to do. We were quite at home with him because he knew his onions. Uh, like I said, cool, calm, mean, um, self-assured, uh, he's the kind of person that you, you'll be proud to have as a president. That is the way I want to put it. Yeah. Well, former Governor of Ogun State, Benga Daniels, thank you so much uh, for sharing your insights. You know, when you talk about the life of Ernest Johnicom, of course, former Nigerian president who have actually passed away at the age of 85.